the first uh, report from our research group, but we will uh, present uh, three ones more during the day. Uh, okay, let's start. Um, so, the main problem uh, uh, is how social movements emerge in uh, a society which has been uh, characterized by depoliticization. So, depoliticization is not just political passivity or indifference towards politics and something else or something, something more. So, uh, we can say about depoliticized context and uh, depoliticized personality. Of course, I uh, simplify because we don't have much time. So, depoliticized context uh, is the lack of social movements, the lack of institutions, and also is stigmatization of protest behavior. But uh, protest behavior is being stigmatized in post-communist uh, world, uh, not because movements are associated with crimes uh, uh, like um, neo-Nazis uh, in Europe, but because in highly individualized society, uh, the fact of collective action is transcending uh, private interests and values. And that is why it is being considered as a threat to people's private interests and values from other private interests. So it's a uh, special type of stigmatization uh, in individualized society. Uh, and uh, uh, Mark Hubert, uh, uh, who studied uh, Russian protest movements and uh, NGOs, argued that uh, not only the lack of resources, not only the lack of uh, institutions uh, uh, is the cause of uh, political passivity, but uh, uh, people, uh, their way of life, uh, their values. So he argued that even when uh, uh, the very different agents from the government to Western foundations uh, gave people many resources and many incentives to create uh, movements and NGOs, they refuse to participate. Uh, uh, so uh, he, his, his main argument was that so they have uh, uh, friendship as a depoliticized collective uh, environment, so they don't need uh, mm, don't need uh, participation in any protest movement, but also because they distrust uh, uh, politics uh, in general. Uh, so, uh, depoliticized personality is, is, is lack of collective identities and uh, the fear of collective action, uh, 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 which is considered like something uh, 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 which threats my personal interest. So, uh, our research question is how depoliticized personality uh, uh, influences dynamics of uh, newly created local movements. Uh, we uh, studied a few uh, local movements who um, were created uh, by uh, the civil observers uh, 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 Ivan just um, talked about. Uh, uh, so, uh, Svet will uh, say about the genesis of, of this uh, new local movements uh, and it's so these movements uh, 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 are very new mm. and so uh, what is precise our question is how uh, some features of this depoliticized personality which previously uh, 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 hindered political engagement when previously distracted people from political participation now uh, become the part of, 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 of political, uh, of ethic of political action. So we will show how this uh, a fear of, of uh, um, collective action, uh, the refusion uh, uh, to become uh, a part of collective uh, now serve as um, um, not factor which uh, uh, distrust people from politics, but uh, uh, um, becomes part of how uh, do they do uh, um, political activism. And what, why, why, why this question? Not, because, not only because we are especially interested in uh, 
subjective uh, aspect, subjective uh, dimension of uh, uh, social movement dynamics, but also um, because, as Donatello said, uh, sometimes uh, agency is uh, uh, um, uh, is crucial, and here we 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 have. Uh, unique experimental uh, 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 cases. Uh, movements are very new, uh, so they consist of newcomers, uh, they don't have uh, uh, resources, uh, and uh, government uh, didn't repress them, uh, have not repressed them yet. Uh, uh, that is why uh, um, uh, the fate of this movement uh, depends on creativity of these people, depends on how these people do behave politically, how do they construct by uh, themselves uh, the groups. Uh, so it doesn't work. Okay, uh, Sveta, please. And uh, now I will say, say uh, a few words about our field. Uh, so as Alec already said, uh, we, um, the groups um, uh, which we uh, started um, uh, have been created by um, election observers. So uh, after the uh, elections, uh, some participant of uh, observers uh, movement decided to continue the protest activity um, and uh, joined or created um, uh, some uh, local activist movements. Um, and um, um, uh, the activities uh, of um, these movements uh, um, focused, uh, for example, on uh, municipal elections, um, on uh, uh, some local environmental problem, or um, monitoring of uh, local authorities' works. And um, we suppose that uh, the wave of, of uh, creation of such movements is uh, very important and um, unnoticed tendency. Uh, for example, uh, we can find out uh, at least uh, 17 uh, such kind of groups in Moscow, nine in Moscow region, uh, four in uh, St. Petersburg, and uh, six in uh, uh, St. Petersburg region. And. Um, about our data. Uh, so this presentation based on uh, semi-structured in-depth interviews uh, uh, with uh, the activists of uh, three groups. Uh, the first is uh, Civil Alliance of Citizens from St. Petersburg. Uh, the second is um, uh, Headquarter from Moscow. And uh, the third is uh, the group of observers from uh, Moscow also. And uh, uh, the name of the groups, uh, of course, uh, are changed uh, here and there of uh, anonymity and safety of the activists. Uh, and um, we use uh, here 17 interviews uh, with the activists collected um, from May uh, 2012 to January 2000. Um, uh, and the, the, 13. Uh, so it was uh, during the first year of uh, group's activity and uh, mm, uh, 14 interviews uh, with the same activist collected in September 2013. Uh, it was uh, the second year, year of activity of uh, these groups. And uh, on the next slide you can see uh, our main methods. Um, and uh, also a few words about the specificity of uh, activity of uh, such groups. Um, uh, so these uh, newly created movements um, uh, are at the first uh, sight similar to some Russian local movements uh, uh, which have been starting before the rallies. Uh, for example, the activists of these uh, newly created movement, local movements often do uh, the same things that um, uh, local movements did before the rallies. Uh, for example, um, um, I don't know, struggle against uh, clear cutting of public parks, etc. Uh, but uh, there is uh, a very important difference between them. Uh, so previous movements uh, were mobilized by um, immediate problems um, that uh, locals faced in their, in, uh, their areas. And uh, such problems are 
like uh, uh, a matter of life and death uh, for the people. And um, the newly created movements have uh, the reverse logic. Uh, so it's logic uh, like uh, from general, universal to instrumental. Uh, so they mobilized and united not because of immediate problems, uh, but uh, in order to reproduce or sustain uh, collective action uh, they uh, experienced uh, in the rallies. Uh, and uh, um, so they choose the problems uh, to solve and uh, target to struggle um, only after the groups uh, were, created, uh, were created and were established. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, the choice of agenda um, are arbitrary. For example, uh, you can see uh, on the slide the um, quotation from our interview. Um, so uh, concerning your question, how we, how we choose what to do whatsoever, because there are a lot of things to do. And I'll let yes. you know. um. Um, we, we, we use uh, quotations here uh, illustratively, but uh, we chose uh, uh, the typical ones, so uh, uh, which we can meet uh, um, in the narratives uh, uh, in all the groups. So, uh, what is general for uh, all the group? Uh, in fact, four, not three, but uh, here we uh, um, based on analysis of three groups. So, the common thing from all of them is uh, the original motive to create groups uh, was uh, the experience of uh, uh, collective action uh, 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 in the rallies and then uh, in the civil observers movement. So, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Donatella said also, uh, we can say here about uh, 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 the um, impact of event. So they experienced event of collective action, which was transformative for them, uh, and um, uh, they wanted to uh, sustain uh, this collective action in new circumstances uh, after rallies declined, uh, and uh, the um, issue of agenda was secondary for them. Uh, so uh, you can uh, see here a very typical quotation. So uh, we ask, how did you decide to struggle over these local problems? And the answer is, after the rallies and the monitoring, we realized that it is not over, that something bonds us, so we need to continue. Uh, so uh, now our main hypothesis. Now these local movements, uh, uh, which participants were so aspired uh, in the beginning, in crisis, uh, we would like to know why. So um, there are various factors, uh, um, of course, uh, resources, uh, uh, repressions, uh, hostile environment, etc. But uh, we would like to to uh, investigate uh, uh, one factor, so uh, how this depoliticized personality uh, uh, mm, I talked about previously uh, mm, uh, influence uh, uh, the group activity, the, the dynamics of group activity. And our hypothesis is the initial aspiration to sustain collective activity, to sustain collective action by creating these local movements is undermined by people's uh, 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 depoliticized uh, personality, by, by the inertia of, of, uh, uh, um, of their habitus, uh, uh, very individualistic and uh, very depoliticized. Uh, so. Okay, so what was surprising for us when we uh, were talking with, with those people that uh, uh, something like after six months, after creation of those groups, they face with a crisis. What does it mean? That means that people who participate in those uh, initiatives, they said that they uh, spent less and less time uh, for the activism and their groups uh, became really um, disordered. Uh, 
So what, uh, what is important when we are talking about the reason of those crises? Uh, the first thing uh, is uh, uh, that we want to mention is how those groups and the work within those groups was organized and is still organized. Uh, this is a project work that, uh, mean, that means that people do different projects with uh, the topic of those projects can be really uh, different, that can be some uh, local elections, that can be some environmental uh, say, uh, solving of environmental problems uh, or something else. Uh, the second thing, uh, what is very important for people who participate in those movements is um, the values of uh, freedom, of self-reliance, uh, of um, and, uh, and they are ready to respect those values, then they're talking about uh, people who also participate in those groups. The second thing that is uh, uh, very important is uh, what, what we call the, uh, the ethic of uh, the policy side, uh, politi political action. What does it mean? Uh, first, it means that um, people who participate in those uh, local movements, uh, they uh, perceive uh, their participation uh, as a voluntary individual contribution. Uh, voluntary means first that this, uh, they participate because this is uh, something what is uh, interested them personally, uh, that means that I'm interested in ecological problems, I'm, safe, I'm solving ecological problems. I'm interested uh, in uh, politics and, and elections, so I'm interested in those projects. Second thing, what uh, does mean voluntary is uh, the will. Uh, that means that uh, they participate uh, when they want, and then they don't want, they <laughs> participate. <laughs> they don't participate in some projects, so we have a, a nice citation. Uh, when a person said that uh, the group is a free association, and if one wants to do something, one does. If one doesn't want to do it, uh, one doesn't do it. When they engaged in a good machine of propaganda that was a Navalny project, uh, I don't participate. I don't want and I don't do, and only if I want, I do. And, and uh, Many of them uh, uh, insisted that it's our main principle, yeah. not imposed to others what they should do. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, defend their own right to do what they uh, what they want. Yes. So this is something like a common and a, a, legit a legitimate value for every for every participant of the group. The second thing about uh, the ethic of uh, the policy side uh, political action is that uh, those activists uh, demonstratively claim uh, their rights to refuse to participate. What means that if they don't want to participate, as I said, they won't participate. <laughs> if they don't want to do something, I don't want to, uh, uh, to protect a park, they won't do it. If they don't want to uh, participate in local electoral, uh, electoral campaigns, they won't participate, still being the part of the group. Uh, uh, this, and this uh, claim uh, to not to participate if they don't want can become um, the reason uh, to uh, go uh, to, to leave the group. Uh, so in this situation you can see that uh, the person said that uh, she wasn't to be um, uh, uh, that this is uh, hard for her to follow the collective opinion and maybe not the collective, uh, but uh, she just want to, uh, she just don't want to obey uh, in opinion of a majority. That it was a situation of a conflict within group and they can't to, uh, uh, manage what they want to do. So, uh, that, uh, let's stop maybe here. I mean, uh, not stop, but uh, it's very good quotation because uh, this girl, she was one of the leaders. So she became responsible for the main project of uh, a group, so uh, defense of public park uh, from clear cutting. And so what she told that I was near, I could stop doing this, could escape my project uh, of struggling against uh, the clear cutting, not because I've decided to escape, but because it's hard for me to, to follow and to obey an opinion of a majority. No, uh, Nat uh, Natasha um, uh, has already said that um, as a result of uh, such uh, contradictions and such, um, um, and such conflicts, uh, the movement's activities turns into a set of uh, individual project. Uh, so, and um, this happens uh, because of, uh, not because of lack of coordination, uh, etc., but because of uh, some uh, uh, values that are fundamental uh, for the particip participants. Uh, but I, um, 
um, just want to um, uh, read one quotation. Uh, so, for example, one uh, people say that uh, I'm acting as coordinator, a coordinator in this case. I coordinate this particular work. Someone is engaged in something else. I take responsibility for this work, and I'm a and uh, I myself uh, look for the external resources and negotiate with local authority. So uh, the, um, with emphasis on myself. Yes, yes. Uh, all, um, this uh, man is uh, resp uh, responsible uh, himself for all kind of work he uh, he do. Uh, and. Uh, yeah. So uh, everything was okay at the beginning, but in, in a six month, all those principles and values they uh, resulted in a, a total frustration, and that uh, the activity of, of the group became just uh, a set of really separated uh, activities of different persons who sometimes uh, didn't know about what uh, other member of the group uh, do at the, uh, is doing at the same moment. So that led uh, to the uh, deep frustration of some participants because. Uh, they uh, can't organize, uh, they can't really um, achieve their goals when they're uh, trying to uh, realize their project. Uh, so uh, I will uh, give you only one quotation. And, um, so uh, what, is, uh, what is the most important thing? That at the beginning we have a group of individuals and in the moment of crisis we have just individuals which are insisted on what they, which are totally uh, disappointed of this uh, experience of collection ac collective action and which are, um, uh, w which are talking about themselves as a separate individuals who can act by themselves without any society or without any collective. So uh, the person also, lead the leader of another group, uh, said that uh, actually not everything depends on a local group. Everything depends only on personality. If someone wants to do something, one will, and one doesn't need a group and one doesn't need a lot of money too. As for me, I don't need a group at all. I can do everything by myself. Uh, so in the conclusion, we can say that um, uh, the mass protests, they produce some new forms of social movements and protest activities uh, because people want to sustain this experience of the collective action, of collective and of action. But at the same time, the protest movement permanently failed because uh, of the inertia or inertia of uh, the politicized individualistic personality because of those uh, ethics, uh, because of those ethics of um, the politicized uh, politicization. Yes. Depoliticized the political participation, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, which is considered like one-time personal act. So if I have one, one minute more, I just wanted to, to say that uh, now we presented just one tendency, uh, which is common for all the groups. But of course, uh, there are uh, uh, many differences uh, which uh, uh, contribute to uh, the level of uh, successfulness of these groups. I just want to, to name the three uh, uh, the, uh, the most important three, so uh, resources. Uh, the fourth group uh, uh, have uh, much more resources. For example, they have their own uh, like uh, um, news, uh, house. mass media, uh, 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 so local newspaper, they, uh, they are a local newspaper, and uh, 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 that is why uh, uh, they can uh, uh, get the access to, 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 to locals uh, and uh, uh, to distribute their uh, uh, agenda. Then uh, eventfulness. Uh, so uh, if uh, sometimes some events from the outside happen and mobilize people from outside, so they are more active. Uh, in, 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 in the same uh, uh, more successful group, so uh, uh, rallies for fair elections, then uh, clear cutting of uh, the forest, uh, then uh, uh, electoral campaign of Navalny, etc., uh, were one by one. Uh, uh, that is why uh, 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 this eventfulness of 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 of, uh, of the environment uh, 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 contributed to 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 the more activity and. Uh, 
the um, the uh, last point is uh, uh, in this successful group we uh, can see like harmony between collective identity, organizational principles, and agenda. So uh, uh, the group consists of people who are very patriotic, uh, uh, who really have strong uh, collective identity of this local town. We don't have uh, it uh, uh, in uh, another uh, uh, cases. So their organization, organizational principles are local too, so the group uh, for people from our town. And agenda uh, uh, is also focused on um, uh, town's problems. So this uh, 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 harmony between uh, three of these uh, things uh, we think also very important for the success. Uh, okay, that's all. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I've discussed this, of course, a lot with the okay? I, I found the research very interesting because I don't like the concept of implications and maybe they can... Uh, uh, I understand it better uh, linked to the research, but I want to um, explain you which one would be my objections and uh, uh, suggestions for alternative terms. Um, one of the reasons why I think I'm um, against this type of concepts is I'm Sicilian and I've seen a lot of Americans coming to my country and saying you are a moral feminist, uh, you are depoliticized, you do not know it. And then you see that in some cases Italy, Spain, Greece, the uh, unceded countries are those in which you find um, most protests. So I think one has to be careful in accepting these uh, concepts which are a sort of st stigmatization from the outside. But also I think as a concept, depoliticization uh, tends to imply that there was a political attitude and now there is, it is no longer there. While I think that what you have described fits very well uh, in uh, the definitions of personalized politics, uh, so Lichtenman and others, uh, who have suggested that there are two different forms of collective actions and uh, of um, um, conceptions of politics. Uh, one is more communitarian and the other one is more personalized. Also, Kupai is typical of the personalized type. So and so, also in a context in which personalized politics, so I don't want to do it, I don't do it, is something we find, for instance, in the global justice movement, which means I, I don't trust my organization so much that I obey the organizations. I have my own consciousness and I act upon this. <coughs> Uh, according to me, would fit better what you found, and would also indicate that, as in other cases, there are a type of organizational strategies which resonate with this type of personalized uh, politics, uh, which is not necessarily against collective actions, mm -hmm. but against some types of collective uh, actions. Once I was in a podium discussion with the leader of the trade union of the past, and he said, for us, uh, organizational strength uh, in politics meant we could call for a strike for five minutes, and after five minutes, people would go back to work. I said, my activists, the activists I studied, would never obey the organizations. They would rather do the same. My organization doesn't join this uh, 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 rally. I, I go with the, uh, a t-shirt saying, I belong to these organizations, but I am here. So very uh, similar to what you say. And I think that the, um, the, these ideas of uh, personalized politics linked to some trends of uh, individualizations, uh, but it's especially subjectivity, uh, uh, could be more useful than the concept of uh, the politicization. Mm -hmm. May I follow up for that? Yeah, yeah. I, I had more or less the same, the, the same question, but uh, framed in a different way. 
If you want to introduce the concept of depersonalized personality as an explanation of the, of the, of the process, then you're basically re replacing the problem because now you have to explain where this depersonalized personality comes from. It, it's not, it, it doesn't, it, it's not a, a, a immaculate uh, conception. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so you, 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 you still have to, to explain how comes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, and uh, we will discuss it uh, uh, later. But I, 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 I want, and I totally agree with uh, uh, the, dan the danger of uh, stigmatization and uh, about organizational types of also very important. Now we uh, are going to study that. So, but about uh, uh, what um, uh, you and Bert said, just a small no remark. So, uh, why uh, depoliticization and where depoliticized personality come from? Uh, so, um, our parents uh, were politicized. I mean, not personally mine, but uh, uh, our generation during perestroika, during uh, uh, the end of 1980s. And then they uh, experienced disappointment and that is why they uh, rejected politics. So they became depoliticized after their politicization. And then during socialization they imposed their children uh, that politics is something you don't need personally. But in individualized society, what you don't need personally is something very dangerous, something that threats uh, uh, you. So uh, this rejection of politicization uh, is passed from generation to generation during socialization. So we have the same rejection, but in a new form. So it's just my answer uh, to, to this question. Many questions, guys. Okay. Well, we will have to run late on the next talks too. Uh, John. Um, I think you're right about the parents' generation. I don't know if the deep politicization is transmitted across generations as you suggest. The fact that these people are engaged in protests suggest that they are interpreting their political action in some positive way. But you are correct that they are failing to sustain an organizational commitment and discipline. This, however, is not unique. Mm -hmm. And that what stunned me about the Occupy Wall Street movement is that the protesters in Occupy Wall Street and the other Occupy movements across America and Europe displayed exactly the same characteristics. That when people came to them and said, this is a great movement, labor would like to join you, they said, no, we don't want to be associated with any organization. And when they were told, this is a great movement, you have support, you can build on it, you need to organize to present to the media, you need to organize your space, they said, no, we think organization is dangerous, <laughs> organization is damaging, we want to be individual free spirits, and our protest <coughs> is our rejection of all organizations. The result of that is that what was a very promising start failed to have any broader impact and eventually the very internal lack of organization led to their being classified as a nuisance and a problem because they weren't presenting a very positive face. So this phenomenon that you've identified I think is real. I think it's become pervasive and I don't know why it is so pervasive but I think it's more than just disillusionment after the perestroika affecting the next generation. It seems to be something about the way this generation interprets political action. Mm -hmm. It's very different than uh, Donatello's union workers who knew you had to follow the plan, you had to act together. That, that no longer seems to be their view. Uh, uh, Mary McCoy. Etc. Et 
you'll find, I, you can find all those quotations coming in different works from 2000, well, it really begins to really get stronger 2009, 2010. I don't know if you know the work by Grani from Pell. Yes, their work, Makagetskaya. Where in fact they look at both NGOs and they look at the non-organized ones and they're coming up with, with what you come up with, that we have this new sort of unorganized, unregistered activity, mm -hmm. which is very personal in a way. Now what I'm not clear is what you're suggesting is new about these, these post-2012 organizations. Are they any different from those informal, not registered organizations that were before? I mean, before we also had, not merely local, didn't we? We didn't just have the blue buckets, but we had the fires and we had the floods, which actually got in national uh, movements involved. Now, are you saying that since 2012, we're really seeing yet a third type of protest organization or grouping appearing. And if you are, then I'm not clear from what you say how it really differs from the ones that we had before. If I could just say one other thing. The interesting point that the Grani group made is that one of the consequences of the clampdown on organized protests and on the organized NGOs is to make the new groupings even more anxious not to register and to retain, as you could say, their kind of spontaneous character. And I think that for the analysis, you've got to bring in the reaction from the authorities as well in order to explain what kinds of, of movements or protests we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, short answer, and then maybe Natasha also will answer. The main difference is that even though they could do the same or face the same problems, the initial motives of those groups was not to solve concrete problems, but to sustain collectivity. That is why uh, their individualistic habitus contradicts their own initial goal, their own initial motive to feel, to, uh, to reproduce uh, the feeling, the experience of collective action after uh, 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 they have been depoliticized and never uh, face these feelings, these emotions and such experience. So uh, uh, that's the, the main difference uh, from this new local, of this new local movements. Yes, and I also want to add something. Uh, this is, yes, one difference uh, w what Olex uh, mentioned. Uh, and um, the second thing, uh, which is uh, important, this is, you are right, because uh, the movements like this, uh, which we, uh, what is, uh, which we uh, described, they existed before. For example, uh, that was some uh, city, what called city movements, uh, uh, which uh, trying to make the city more comfortable, more beautiful, and more suitable for living for, for, for ordinary persons. So this is also those movement uh, in Krimsk uh, uh, of volunteers in Krimsk and others. But what is interesting that um, if we compare uh, those groups, and actually uh, you can see this, uh, the first picture, this is the picture from uh, Navalny campaign, the new Navalny campaign, which calls uh, people deputy. And you see uh, a person who consists of millions of different, <laughs> different separated persons. What is interesting that uh, uh, those, uh, the groups which were organized, like uh, our local groups, they existed before. But now, after the rallies, this, uh, logic of organization of collective action they, uh, they, they exist before and there were other groups uh, described by Kleman but after rallies uh, we have uh, 
as I see it, uh, two main uh, tendencies. This is those local groups first, and Navalny campaigns, Mayor Navalny campaigns, then uh, what, uh, what is going now, uh, his campaign before uh, the election to Moscow Duma. Those uh, two movements, they are, uh, they are organized according to those principles, not to uh, uh, principles uh, like uh, uh, when people mobilized by special problems, by the principles of which were, which exist before, but they were just one of just one, that was just one of uh, 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 that was just one type of the movement. But now, after rallies, this is for me. It seems that it became much more uh, dominant. Those principles and organization which are based on those principles. Uh, <clears throat> just to return to this debate, you know, the depoliticized personality and its uh, usefulness, uh, I think the only way to make this concept useful is to uh, show its contingency and to historicize it, as you began to do. But I would actually like to push you a little further in that historicization, uh, because I think that you know, I can count at least three sources of uh, depoliticization. And, and one is these often phantom pains from uh, Soviet memory. And, and I experienced that very clearly as a graduate student organizing my American institution when I was an organizer for the Slavic Department, mostly made up of Russians or emigres. And uh, I could tell that whenever I was speaking to my colleagues, who were friends otherwise, uh, about uh, you know, various solidarity actions, petitions, uh, coming to Rams, uh, they were hearing they were hearing a consumo organizer, uh, a consumo activist, uh, because to them that language of uh, was a reference to uh, to Soviet. Even we had to I had to occasionally switch to English, which is a somewhat more neutral language. Uh, so, so this is the first uh, source, you know, phantom pains. Uh, secondly, you know, obviously political violence, uh, you know, like 90, October 93, or, you know, violence, um, you know, against the labor union activists, etc. Uh, a major source of depoliticization. And the third source, which I've um, seen often and experienced myself, is, uh, you know, various and very often an intentional but terribly organized uh, activist events, out of which many people come thinking I'm not showing up. Uh, so uh, there are others, but I think it would really be good to uh, make this concept uh, politicized personality very historical and contingent and not. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we have it. Yes, yes. yes. You have it. Comparison with this brilliant book by Yenis Ukwo uh, about the popular opinion or общественное настроение in the latest days of Stalin. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting if we compare that book with yours because she finds after the Second World War a rediscovery of the richness of the individuality which is not the opposite of politicization. First thing is, this is that, I'm sure you know very well, is that this prepares some kind of civic activism of the objective of the thought. So, it would be interesting. Okay, Kari. Uh, Precisation. <laughs> Uh, terms about uh, personal qualities or 
über äh, Part-Time-Aktivismus Uh, uh, about Navalny uh, company, uh, it is uh, the principles are the same as the, those we can find in our groups. But uh, this is a campaign which organized in another way because it's a big campaign, a huge campaign with a center, with a leader first, and with a big bureaucratic organization in the core. Because actually they have a, a, an organization, an, an organization which just plan and distribute uh, some activities. And uh, a lot of uh, volunteers who, uh, uh, who do different things. And uh, so this is just, a, this, yes, this is uh, the type of um, successful campaign. But uh, this group, if we're talking about this campaign, is a movement. This movement is organized a little bit differently. Because in our case, we don't have this bureaucratic organization in yes, the center so in of our the case movement. pure pure self organization and uh, concerning uh, 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 so not organization plus self organization like in Navalny's campaign but only, uh, only self organization and about your first question it's very good question we don't know it's open question maybe it's necessary to go firstly through these steps of uh, uh, organic uh, 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 creation of uh, uh, collectivity and Natasha supposes uh, uh, that uh, it's impossible to sustain collectivity without the first steps. But uh, so, but it's open question. We, we don't know, and it, it would be interested, interesting to discuss it. I want to add methodologically uh, to the comments of uh, Natalia and Jack, uh, with, with which I agree that uh, also uh, in the situation of an interview. <coughs> Uh, obviously, people are very emphatically telling you that actually they are against collectivity or in, in, in individualism. But we know these people actually participated in collective action. So they are kind of trying to justify in front of you or to resist your pressure because yeah, they might see you as agents of normative ideals of, collectiv uh, of, co of collectivism, which you are. <coughs> they might feel it. Uh, so, uh, 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 one has to be careful about this. The, the, the picture is obviously uh, uh, the resultant of two forces. One, uh, social dissolution and individualization, and uh, another very strong uh, uh, push for collectivity that is, uh, that is there in the society, uh, it, and, for, and not only on the, on the liberal side. Uh, we've discussed uh, Putin's uh, concerns uh, to, to, to put people together, which are, well, basically going in the same direction. It's more <coughs> that could I add, because I agree with this, and I think also one of the consequences is uh, it is extremely risky to talk about personality on the basis of this type of interviews, because personality is something much more stable than expressed values. And uh, I would not feel uh, so it is easy as a sociologist to say that I can uh, find out the personality of the, of the person. I will leave this uh, uh, to me, psychologists, even more psychoanalysts, and so on. And the idea is uh, personality is 
something which uh, you, you don't change every two years, when in this case you have uh, waves of uh, participation. Personalities and other can change.